So in 2014, when I worked with my first wild horses, I took two older stallions out, which in hindsight was really not the smartest idea. I had broken in a number of horses. I'd worked with horses that had been untouched, but my, I was very green and my understanding of how to work with animals like that was pretty marginal. And I, I knew at the time I had a lot to learn. I had a huge loss of confidence from that experience. I had um, Hoff who was extremely difficult and he ended up having blood poisoning from teeth rotten in his mouth and a fractured skull. Um, I, Nika went on to have a great life. He's, he's well loved, he's transitioned beautifully, but, but Hoff just really wasn't never happy. And I lost so much confidence in myself as a trainer, but also with horses. I couldn't walk out in the middle of a paddock with a horse because I was so scared I was gonna get charged because Hoff was very aggressive. Um, so when I worked with Spring the Mustang, I was very much defensive in, in my body language. I was like overreacting if she moved in a bit close to me because I had so many fears develop um, from working with those wild stallions, which was, which was good to know because, you know, you do really have to be a professional to take older stallions out of the wild and I was too green at the time um, in hindsight but my goal at that stage was I, I want to become the best horsewoman I can and um, a few pivotal things happened in the journey where that motivation and passion completely um, accelerated and one was when Vicky got invited to compete at Road to the Horse in 2017, 18 and 19 and I remember going over there and watching these trainers who were incredible in three days they took these colt untouched colts from being you know untouched all the way through to riding around obstacles and super confident and happy and i remember being so inspired by this and, and starting to um, google and study all these different ways of training and then in 2019 when me kelly and a few friends were over in canada um, kelly was photographing for her book wild horses of the world we were staying um, with this guy called Daryl who had taken us out in ATVs to um, photograph the wildies in the Rocky Mountains and back at his place he had two 11 hand wild Caspian ponies that hadn't been touched and he asked if it was possible if we could work with them and Kelly took the little filly and I took the colt and within 10 minutes Kelly had a halter on this filly and in half an hour I still couldn't get near my colt. I could kind of get close to him, put my fingers out, touch his mane and then he'd panic and recoil away and Kelly said in half an hour and she said, do you want my help? And I was like, no, Kelly, it's fine. Like, obviously I got the harder horse, like, you know, a bit of pride in the way. And also taking advice from your sister's never fun. And anyway, another 15 minutes later, Kelly says, Amanda, are you sure you don't want my help? And I was really frustrated at this time, but because, you know, I was failing. And I didn't want to take her advice because at that stage, and this is where pride has gotten the way, I didn't, like, when you're working with your sisters, you know, they're just like, you know, you're not inspired by them that much. They're just, you know, your sisters. Well, they are inspiring, but you know what I mean. And I finally said, fine, but you, you won't be able to do much better. He's just a really difficult, scared horse. Anyway, in five minutes, she had a halter on him. And I loved that moment in hindsight because um, I just realized I didn't know what I was doing. And I finally um, had to kind of suck it up and say, Kelly, I need help. And from then on, Kelly completely transformed the way I worked with horses and, and her way of training was built off Concord, who um, was a very difficult, gorgeous, gorgeous stallion, but very difficult horse that really struggled with domestication. He's a horse that we very much think had PTSD. Um, and we had to work, through, well, Kelly had to work through a lot of trauma with him. And so Kelly took me back to the very basics of understanding body language and understanding the fear responses, which I knew really well in humans, but it didn't like register to me that it could be carried over in horses. I, I knew the fight and flight responses. I, in my mind, when they ran or they pinned their ears back, they were being rude or not trying that hard, etc. And in, and in hindsight, they were feeling overwhelmed by the situation. They'd run out of conscious information to keep themselves safe and they were trying to escape. And, and if they know what they're doing and, they're just, and you, can, you can tell in their body language that they really are just being rude, that's a different story. But if they're showing in their body language, I'm so scared, I don't understand, I'm overwhelmed, um, being able to have 
this ability to now be able to communicate with them instead of just ignoring those subtle body language cues has completely changed the way I work with horses, my show jumpers included. I am very aware when a horse is starting to slip into freeze mode, which is where so many people mistake that for a horse being quiet. But it, and I see it all the time in domestication, all these shut down horses, and they're like, oh yeah, my horse is so bomb proof, it's so easy. And, and I look at it and it's, its body language and its expression is very much saying, I'm so shut down, I'm so dissociated. Um, which breaks my heart because um, I didn't understand it for so many years and other, lots of other people don't understand it. And so like my goal is to encourage people to start to begin to understand how horses communicate and to listen and communicate back to them. And I was, I was trying to listen, I just didn't understand their language. And now I'm learning the, their language and I still have lots to learn, but it, it honestly has changed everything for me and it has been one of the best journeys I've ever been on and I just think if I've learned this much in the last seven years how much more can I learn for the rest of my life and I never want to stop learning I just want to learn and take in everything and experiment and try new ways and um, improve myself and I a big part of what I do now is I have a failure list and I uh, it's where I'll go and work with my horses and something will go wrong and instead of just ignoring it and coming back the next day and not learning from it. I go inside, I write down my failing list, I say what skills am I lacking to have made this successful, what change could I make in my pattern of how I train. I learn about it, I go back, I don't make the same mistake again. So I'm very aware I do make mistakes and I, ju I do some really stupid things and I misread things sometimes and I get frustrated sometimes but I'm very aware of it. I'm very um, goal orientated and um, wanting to grow as a horsewoman for my horse's sake. So um, it's been a cool journey and I'm super excited to see what comes up in the next few years.